Hello everyone, I'm Marty Pospisil and welcome to my March 2024 real estate market update. Well, I've got a lot of interesting stuff to share with you today, but I'm going to jump right into it. And just before I get into the stats, let's talk about the new programs. Hooray! What's happening? What are they doing now? Federal government cancels the failed first time home buyers incentive program. Well, no surprise here. Um, the federal government finally realized that the incentive program didn't work because it was a program where they actually provided five to 10% of the purchase price um, on your home and you would repay it when you sold the home um, or within 25 years, whatever was earlier. Uh, but the price had to be below a million dollars and your income had to be less than 120 uh, in, in Canada or 150 in Toronto and uh, Vancouver, of course. But very few people took advantage of it. I think like 25,000 uh, people roughly over the period of time they ran the program. It failed, so that's gone. Um, next news from the budget from the BC government, the new BC home flipping tax, hooray! So there's a new tax um, as of January 1st next year, and it's gonna be a 20% tax on the lift, on the sale of a property, if you sell within two years. Now, there are some exemptions, of course, you're divorcing, etc. cetera. There's, there's, there's things that, that you can be exempt from, but you have to pay 20% of that lift or the profit made um, to the government uh, within the first year, and then it's prorated between 20% and zero to the second year. So um, another tax, another form, another, another program, yay! Uh, the BC government also announced changes, a little bit more positive, um, to, the, uh, to the property transfer tax. As of April 1st this year, um, the fair market value threshold, which has always been way too low for Vancouver, was increased to 835,000. Um, and it's only payable on the purchase price from 500,000 up. So everything, um, the, the amount of, of purchase price below 500,000 is not being calculated. So for example, if you buy something at 700,000, you only pay property transfer tax um, from 500 to 700,000. So that's 200,000 at 2%. Uh, at, so that would be $4,000. So, um, and it increases from 750,000 to 1.1 million um, for the new home threshold. So that's for new product. And uh, it goes up to a million 150 um, with some additional uh, um, prorated amounts there. And the exemptions on per, uh, purchasing purpose built rental buildings um, that are payable in the, on the sale price over 3 million if you're purchasing a rental building. So there's been some changes. Those are positive. The home flipping tax, well, what that's probably going to do, investors are now going to hold their property rather than putting it onto the market. So that's going to restrict some inventory that might have otherwise been in the market. And the property sold within two years is really less than 2% of the sales activity, uh, at least in Vancouver. So some interesting news there, but I thought I'd cover that so you guys are reading about it you've got the summary let's talk about what is happening so price appreciation is accelerating as I predicted um, in the previous months what I said was going to happen is actually happening uh, the sales activity year over year for detached houses is up 8.3 percent the price year over year is up 7.2 percent and last month we have an accelerated price increase of 1.5%. So we're seeing that um, from near zero now jumping up to one and a half percent in one month for detached houses. This is all in Greater Vancouver. Attached townhomes and half duplexes, year over year, the activity is up 10%. The price year over year is up 4.2%. And last month, townhomes and half duplexes in Greater Vancouver jumped up 2.6% very significant on a monthly increase in prices. 
attached apartment condos activity up 18% year over year, prices up from last year 5.6% and prices up last month 2.5%. Significant increases in price and it is accelerating as predicted. What's hot and what's not. Remember um, the metric I'm using to track the activity uh, in the market is the sales ratio and all of that, all that really is, is the absorption rate of product into the market. If less than 11% is being absorbed or sold, in a given month, it is a buyer's market. There's downward pressure on pricing. If between 12 and 20% of the inventory is selling in a given month, it's a balanced market. It's not favoring the buyers or the sellers. However, if greater than 21% of the given inventory sells in a month, you are in a seller's market, upward pressure on prices. So let's look at our various areas. Detached houses, Vancouver West Side. You can see the trend since last summer. Uh, we were in a pretty solid buyer's market last month. This month, you can see we've jumped up from that 9% to 15%. We're still in balanced market territory, but a significant increase in activity on detached houses, condos and townhomes on the west side. Last month, we were at a pretty solid balance, 17%. And this month, the activity jumped up significantly for attached to 24%, well within the seller's market range. And we're seeing that multiple offer situation happening on the attached product. We're also seeing an detached. Those stats will come out even more next month, but you can see that happening here. And condos, townhomes, downtown, we separate that out. Uh, that was right just into that balanced market from a buyer's market last month. This month, we're at 15%, so it has jumped up slightly from last month, but still in buyer's market territory. Let's go over to the east side. Detached houses, Vancouver east side. You can see relatively slow last year up until uh, January and February. Still, that was right in the upper end of that buyer's market. And just this month, it jumped up from 11% to 17%. Significant increase in activity. And of course, we're still in balanced market territory for houses east side. And if we go into condos, townhomes on the east side, you can see last month we were just inside of a seller's market at 21%. This month, the activity, of course, has jumped up to 28% for attached product on the east side. Significant increase and a very strong seller's market. So you can see the sales ratios are all increasing now, getting into that sales market territory. If we're looking at the MLS um, residential sales uh, ratio throughout all of BC, you can see uh, this data is a little bit old. I'm waiting uh, for the uh, BCREA stats to come out, but if you saw it right up to today, you'd see it coming just out of that balanced market territory. You'll see that in a couple of weeks. So. What's happening in the burbs? If we look at all of the lower mainland and we're looking at detached um, activity, sales ratio compared to the previous months, green means the activity has gone up, red means the activity has dropped, that sales ratio metric, and it's up everywhere for detached in the lower mainland except for North Vancouver, Burnaby, North Delta, Ladner, and Tawasson, but everywhere else we saw detached housing activity jump up. In the lower mainland for attached, you can see same thing. We're seeing increased activity throughout the entire lower mainland. I kind of feel like a weather person here. We've got a cold front moving in from the north, minus eight degrees tonight. Um, but two areas where it dropped was, of course, Pitt Meadows and North Delta. Those will probably turn green next month. So we're seeing activity on attached product even more significant. And that's where it starts from an activity point of view. It usually starts in the ground up, works from uh, entry level attached, middle, upper attached, jumps into, uh, into detached. So this is no surprise. Lower mainland, very, very active. So what's happening with prices? Where are we going with prices? As you can see across BC, that price trend uh, where it peaked back in 2022, we're getting close to that from a BC point of view. 
And in terms of the average price graph, I love this historical graph. You can see here, um, we've got some really good adjustments back up on the detached and the attached and half duplexes and of course the condos. Um, we're seeing those average prices increase as well in Greater Vancouver. Uh, and also, if we're looking at the um, HPI prices, we're starting to see those increase as well throughout Metro Vancouver. But more importantly, what is going to happen? Where's our market going now in this excitement that's taking place? Let's look at our stats here. Again, the main drivers, uh, enhancers are in green. The market deterrent drivers are in red. If we look at our first one, consumer confidence, buyers are buying, the demand's really high, it's been high since the beginning of the year, people are buying stuff, they're competing, and um, we're seeing that really enhancing our activity in the market. Inflation, of course, we'll get into more detail, but inflation is behaving extremely well, uh, and that, of course, is going to result in the mortgage rate changes, which we'll talk about cost of borrowing here. Uh, it's still high, but everybody is anticipating those drops coming. So we're going into that transitional uh, color of orange before it turns green. And the same with inventory. Inventory levels are increasing, albeit slowly. We'll show you it's between eight and 20% for product in different areas, but it is starting to increase and that will start to accelerate as we get into mid to later March when a lot of people list. So there's our same consumer jumping around with all the purchases and um, making uh, uh, lots of transactions happen. And of course, that's also happening in real estate. If we look at BC in general, we're seeing quite a, an uptick in um, activity from the sales. And if we look at uh, the employment rate, of course, that's increasing as well. Um, this was an interesting article I read in the Globe. CMHC forecast underestimates population rise and housing need, uh, the economists warn. So the CMHC predicted uh, that uh, the required amount of homes uh, for the coming years was going to be much less than it actually is. And this is going to create somewhat of a housing shortage uh, throughout Canada. Um, that's a really interesting point to note. And we're seeing the government scramble to try and create more housing because that demand is much higher than we expected. Um, and CMHC forecasts, they're, they're getting all of this data in and now adjusting it upwards. And it's very difficult for for the provinces and municipalities to respond quickly enough to provide housing, um, but they were short quite a significant amount of, of, uh, of homes that are needed to meet this demand. So that was quite interesting to note, just another driver that's going to force the uh, activity higher and higher. Unemployment rate um, is pretty well the same in Canada, 5.7%. And BC, 5.4%. Uh, so that's holding pretty steady. And if we're looking at inflation, that's a big thing everybody's watching. Um, there's uh, Mr. Macklin back market in his hands. Uh, inflation dropped finally below 3%. It's at 2.86% now for the first time since it took off in 20. 21. So that's really good news. Inflation's doing very well. Uh, I like the little backlit there I added in. Um, and investors, of course, are saying that um, the Bank of Canada is going to hold its rates steady now and possibly make that drop in April or May or latest June, but it is coming. Uh, we all know that. And any rate cut that's coming would be the first rate cut in almost two years. But remember, the central bank officials, they're worried about cutting the rates too early. This is their prime concern as um, they, they've talked about this in their, their recent mini, uh, meetings when, when they're talking about whether to hold them steady, lower or increase. The talk about increase in the rates has disappeared. They are admitting now we are um, we're going where we need to go with respect to inflation uh, and that the rates will come down. They're just not saying when. And they also don't want to throw 
fuel on the fire for the spring real estate market. Uh, that was interesting to hear because that's exactly what they were trying to separate themselves from earlier. Um, as the, um, the rates cuts come in this year, they are worried that might have a reverse effect and they don't want to have to start increasing the rates again. So they're being conservative and it's a tough job because they, they can't predict the future. So that's really interesting. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the shelter prices increased 6.2% uh, already from the year earlier uh, and up from 6% in December. And the rents increased by 7.9%. That's up from 77 So again, Mr. Macklem recently stressed that the monetary policy cannot solve the country's housing affordability issues. So there's that separation. You've got to keep housing separate. We're doing our job trying to get the inflation rate under control. You separate housing, inflation's doing quite well. Okay, so let's move on. And we will jump into, oh, that's the overall graph. Oh boy, remember last year when inflation was at 8%? So here's where we are now, and we want to get about here. So we're getting darn close. It's looking pretty good. We dropped from 3.4%, we're down to 2.86. So we're in that range. The range has always been from 2 to 3%, the uh, target range uh, that uh, the Bank of Canada has been trying to hit. Okay. So in terms of how we're doing compared to the Fed, uh, you can see uh, right next door, just south of us, they're at 3.09 percent. We're at that 2.86, so we are in sync. That's good news. We want to stay relatively close to them and uh, not have any big discrepancy in inflation rates. And as we talked about earlier, that rate is likely to come down as early as April, possibly May or June. And that's going to throw additional, to quote Mr. Macklem, fuel in the fire for real estate. Uh, and that will be an interesting time when those rates actually drop down. So the cost of borrowing, here is the prediction of the big six banks. As I mentioned, they're looking by mid-year to drop from 25 to 50 basis points, so almost up to a half percent very soon. And then by the end of the year, we're talking 125 to 175 basis points. So we could be seeing rates. If we're in the high fours now, we could be in the high twos again. That would be awesome if we broke 3% for our mortgage rates. So that's all good news. That's what the buyers are realizing. They're jumping in. They're, they've been waiting to buy for years um, because of COVID and high inflation. Now they're jumping in. They're buying because they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so let's talk about uh, inventory because that's another big driver we're watching. If we're looking at Vancouver West Side houses inventory levels, you can see um, we went from 550 listings up to 610 listings and we went from 600 and for attached uh, that was detached attached we went from 610 to 660 we're seeing an average about eight up to 20 percent increase in inventory across the board if we look at the east side for houses we're up from 346 to 369 not as big a jump now remember how that sales ratio jumped quite significantly in the east side this is why the inventory is not increasing quickly enough. That was for houses east side. If we're looking at condos and townhomes east side, it went from 413 to 500, a nice healthy jump. So that inventory is increasing, but not quickly enough. We need that inventory to really start taking off. Active listings across BC are increasing, so that's all good. In the various territories, we're looking on the island, Thompson, Okanagan, Lower Mainland, and Kootenai. You can see those active listings starting to increase, so that's good. So what's next for prices? So if we're looking at unit sales, we can see all of that increasing across BC. That's it. All these people are running to this house. They all want to buy it at the same time. <laughs> That's pretty well the summary of, of what is happening. But in conclusion, if we look at it, remember our main drivers 
um, that directly impact our market are, of course, the mortgage rates, which is impacted by inflation through the Bank of Canada. The inventory, which we just looked at, that's increasing, but not quite quickly enough. And of course, consumer confidence and, and demand, the buyers, uh, which is at an all-time high because they've been waiting so long to buy. So that's what we look at. Inflation's behaving, 2.86%. That's awesome. Uh, the Bank of Canada is holding the overnight rate where it is now, and they're preparing for the coming drops. That's good news as well. The listings are coming in at 8 to 20% per month, increasing for much needed inventory for not only the buyers, but to bring more sellers in the market because people who are selling are typically buying again. So we want to have inventory for them to downsize or upsize too, and that will start fueling the market as well. So that's good news. So the recent good news on inflation will be enough to prompt the rate cuts as we talked about and the mortgage interest rates should decrease by mid-year as I mentioned 25 to 50 basis points by the end of the year up to 175 basis points. I hope that holds true. That's looking pretty good right now. So the buyer demand is at an all-time high and inventory is increasing but not fast enough and as the sales ratio intensifies, you'll see those prices accelerate even quicker. Uh, so overall, for what I'm saying this year, it's going to be a very active year uh, with continued price increases. And of course, when those rates do start to drop, that's going to further excite the market. And you're going to see those price increases, specifically the monthly ones, take off even more. So that's my uh, conclusion for where we are in the market. And that is my March 2024 market update. You can watch my videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our Instagram page. And if you're into podcasting, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and of course, Google Podcasts. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Marty Pospisil. Keep your questions coming. I've got my email address here, marty at pospisilrealty.com. Happy to answer any specific questions that you have. Happy to give you any real estate information uh, that you might need. Uh, enjoy the great day. It looks like the sun is coming out. It's going to be a little chilly here in Vancouver. Uh, but again, what a great day to be here. Thank you very much for joining me.